Hey everyone, to another half dev call. So, uh, as always, uh, we'll start shortly with uh, an update on what the informal team did in the last two weeks, and afterwards we are uh, passing off to Haifa. If uh, any other topics we can discuss in afterwards, please add them to the agenda. Okay, so. Um, we we started working on the v16 for a while um the ibc rate limit module is uh so the single uh, singling proposal passed uh, the mod uh, module integration is done uh okay uh with together with the uh, end-to-end -end test and the next thing will be to add the rate limits from the proposal to add them in the upgrade handler right so that to to be set automatically on the upgrade um yeah uh, another thing is we added the we integrated the ICA controller I mentioned last time this is quite the the, the vanilla version just to enable uh, users on the hub to set up ICA accounts on other chains on for example on neutron or on stride and control them then we are working on integrating the IBC fee middleware um we want to pay attention there how do we integrate it and how we test it to avoid uh, issues. We heard that there are some issues with uh, the IBC fee middleware when uh, you put it together with PFR. Right? So I think there were some issues on the ejective. So we want to just make sure that everything is fine. And the other thing is we are working on the skip, uh, skip block SDK, right? And the fee market. The block SDK is quite straightforward. The fee market, uh, there are few issues. So first of all, it changes the current behavior of how the fee, the fees work on the hub. So for example, one major thing is that the base fees will be moved now to a separate account and not moved to the fee collector that is uh, on the, in the distribution module. This means that they will not be automatically distributed to the stakeholders. So this is meant as a soft burn, right? The account, of course, they are not burned, but they are just staying that in that separate account. Um, this is basically how AIP 1559 works. Uh, also, from uh, from this account, we could move these fees to either be burned properly or to move them to a community pool, but that mechanism is not implemented yet. Also, the tips. So basically, everything that goes on these base fees are now given to the proposer, right? So at the moment on the hub, you have the proposer doesn't get extra rewards. This was in the past, but that was deactivated in SDK a while ago. So this is how it's going to change. Now, because of this, we also need to change some stuff in the module. First of all, we need to align the base fee, the minimum base fee uh, to with the Cosmos SDK implementation, right? So we need to basically set, uh, it's an integer now and we have to set it to a decimal. Otherwise, the transaction fees will increase substantially. So we don't want that. We need to be able to put something like 0 0.25 U atoms or whatever. Um, at the moment, the minimum is one U atom. So that, that will be too big. Um, also, as I mentioned before, we need to add these gap-gated mechanisms of what to do with these base fees. So they are in that separate, they will end up in the separate account of the fee market module. Uh, but we want to either be able to burn them or to move them to the community pool. We cannot move them to the dis to the to distribute them to the stakeholders because that will break the incentives around the AIP uh, around the fee market. And uh, because of all of this, we we decided to to postpone this feature. So basically, to add it to a future, to a future release, Gaia V17 or whatever. Uh, this is mainly because, uh, yeah, we want more time to test, to implement this, so to 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 add the changes, to integrate it properly, and to test it properly. It's uh, we we consider it's a big change. Um, all of these changes were approved by the by a governance proposal, right? By signal proposal, uh, the signal proposal mentioned EIP 1559, however, I didn't go into the details of how this behavior changes the existing behavior. So 
yeah, we just want to make sure that everything works fine. So V16 will not contain uh, the block SDK. Cool. Uh, then uh, we we have a coordinated upgrade for uh, for the hub for April tenth. Uh, so we want to port, uh, to upgrade to V15 uh, to zero. We have already a release candidate. Uh, this was already we'll see later the the testnet. It was already upgraded to this. The major issue that we are trying to fix is that after the SDK forty seven upgrade, the metadata data length for gov props was set to the default 255 which means basically that um, we cannot really submit governance proposals with with any text in them like it was uh, possible before uh you will see that uh, now a lot of the proposals have uh, just a link to an, IP, uh, an ipfs link right so the content is somewhere else we want to fix that and uh I think it's important to fix it also before we submit the V16 software upgrade. So I think even that will not work. So to go back to the usual behavior, we need to have a, a coordinated update. Okay, regarding PSS, <laughs> also known as ICS 2.0, we added the signal proposal. It's live from the hub. Uh, also, we handed off to Haifa the PSS DevNet. And uh, yeah, working, we are working together to to get feedback, uh, feedback to improve some issues and to add stuff. In the end, the, the goal is to uh, to create the incentivized test. Uh, we also have a first draft of the code, and it's actually running in this DevNet. So the next thing is to to work together with Haifa for this incentivized testnet and to start working on the power shapings. This is uh, these are all these uh, ways of changing the validator set in capping the powers, for example, or uh, whitelisting or blacklisting validators, or uh, what was that? Uh, capping the size of the validator set. So different things of uh, what you can do with the validator set adjusted. Uh, on the mega blocks front, we created a demo on how it works. So we have a first draft. We discussed that before. Uh, the thing works uh, exactly what we planned to do. We created a demo and we'll publish it soon. Uh, also, an interesting thing: there was an issue with Stride. Uh, it was uh, uh, basically it was brought uh, to our attention on uh, Discord. So thanks, uh, thanks for the notifier for this. So the main problem was uh, I will not go and read everything here, but the main idea was that the packets from the stride to the hub were uh, were not sent, right? So actually, the packets uh, between they were pending on the hub side, right? Yeah, they were pending on the hub side, so they they were not relayed. As a result, uh, the throttling mechanism. Uh, is is designed so that when there is a slash packet sent from the a consumer chain to the provider chain, you send just one, you receive an acknowledgement back, and then you send the next one. And everything else behind stops, right? VAC mature packets, other slash packets, all of them are pending on the consumer chain until you receive that acknowledgement. Because it was this lag and packets are not clear from the hub going towards stride, uh, the acknowledgement was not coming for quite a lot, uh, a lot of time. So I think it was a delay of 16 hours or something like this, uh, a lag. Um, so basically, the how we how we fix that, we our uh, own validator team from Informal start using Hermes and cleared out packets, uh, and the issue got solved in a few hours. So we we got in touch with uh, Stride to. Uh, about the issue, they talked with their uh, with their relays, like the the operator, the relay operator, and uh, they start also monitoring for these things to not happen in the future. Uh, yeah, that's uh, that's pretty much it. And a last point is that uh, to to improve the monitoring of such issues because by delaying these VAC mature packets, the worst case scenario is that. You delay them long enough to affect the unbonding 
of uh, on the on the hub right so somebody is undelegating its stake and that will be delayed because we are still waiting for these vsc mature packets so to be able to monitor this easier we we added a new query it's not yet in production but we'll add it in v16 a new query that you can query the oldest unconfirmed vsc packet right so the oldest packet for which you didn't receive a vsc mature packet from a consumer chain uh so you have to get also the timestamp. So this will allow you to check if this timestamp is three, three weeks in the past, then there is a problem, right? So you kind of estimate uh, how, uh, how likely it is that, uh, that, that, that such, uh, some problem exists somewhere. Um, yeah, this is pretty much all on our side. Any, any questions? No. Okay, then uh, I'll pass it to Dante, I guess. Yep. Yeah, uh, so let's see here. What have we been up to the last couple of weeks? Uh, quick uh, summary of what we've been doing in Testnet Wednesdays. Last week, we upgraded to Gaia v15.1.0 uh, just to catch up with mainnet. We we're running a RC3 of 15.0. Uh, that went well. It was just a binary swap, no no issues there. And right after that, we did our second game day for. Uh, it was focused on liquid staking module. A uh, lot of a uh, lot of participation there. Uh, some good uh, learning opportunities in terms of like people not knowing how to do bonding, how to tokenize. Uh, so I think it was it, was, it went well. Um, and then today we upgraded to v15.2.0 RC0, uh, and shortly after we tried uh, submitting a proposal with a very long summary field, it went way past the 255 uh, character limit. It went on changes fine, and it did trigger some uh, consensus issues with the people who did not uh, upgrade to the new binary, which was expected. Uh, so yeah, that's that clears the way to uh, upgrade uh, next week on mainnet. <clears throat> um, yeah, prior to that, we had done some uh, testing on that same release candidate to confirm that uh, we could submit proposals with very long uh, fields. Uh, in terms of V16, uh, yeah, we're, we're testing, uh, we're running tests on uh, nightly builds of the main branch. Uh, and as new features get implemented, we'll, we'll make sure those tests are run. And like you mentioned, Marius, on the, on the partials of security, uh, we launched uh, the DevNet uh, last week with a provider chain. We just uh, we changed the the commit that we had launched the the chain with to a tag on the uh, interchain security repo, and uh, we have uh, so far one validator has joined besides ours, and we are scheduled to launch the first top end uh, consumer chain uh, later this week. Uh, don't expect anything to. Uh, go sideways. I think that we 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 have run enough tests on the top end uh, launch to to know what to expect, and then uh, early next week we'll move on to uh, launching an opt-in chain, and from then just uh, running different operations in the way of uh, opting out, opting in, uh, and uh, yeah, like you mentioned, just playing with the uh, the power distribution to see uh, see how things uh, progress there. <laughs> This sounds good. A question that I have regarding the DevNet uh, for PSS. Can we try to add to transition Neutron from Replica Security to Top End? See On if the DevNet? Yes. So to basically start a consumer chain that is Neutron, mm -hmm. but yeah. to, to... I don't even know how we do that, actually, because it, we don't have the like, to actually start yeah. the replicated security because it's still working, mm -hmm. and then transition to a top end. I, I know that uh, we don't have all the, the steps how to do so, but that's something that we should uh, figure out. Yeah. Actually, Marius, I wanted to um, just ask about that really quick. I, one of the goals with, I forgot where we ended up in the, in the software development. One of the goals was that we could potentially remove replicated security and just go to top end, right? 
Um, yeah. Like, but what we ended up doing, did we do it that way or is it still the code yeah. paths for just replicated security are still in there? I don't think that is, what is the replicated security in then? So because replicated security on top end, we just took replicated security and we generalized it, right? Yeah. We we made it uh, that you can do multiple things with it. Uh, so before, because replicated security was you get the set and you don't do anything to the set, you just send it to the, the, to the consumer, the validator set, the powers. Now we start applying to different type of shaping methods on them, right? To kind of kick out the ones that are opted out, to keep just the top end, stuff like this. So it's the same code in there. Of course, it's modified, but it shouldn't. So, like, if you go top 100, for example, it will be 100% security. security. Right, right. But, but the, well, okay. So the way that top end works is a little different though, because it's this thing where top end actually does this automatic opting in, um, like this automatic opting in and out and stuff like that. Um, whereas replicated security just sends the whole set through. So I can imagine, I don't know how, where, how it is in the code exactly right now, but I can imagine that, um, uh, maybe replicated security just still just works. It's still in there. Right. Yeah. So this is what I'm saying. If you, if you try to launch now a chain with top 100, that will be replicated security. No, 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 no. Okay. I mean, okay. no, uh, what I'm, yes, in theory, yes, of course. And that's why I designed top end the way I did, um, because to provide a transition path or whatever to have it be equivalent if you do top end 100%. But what I'm wondering is like right now, if you were to just leave Stride and Neutron, actually to have someone from like Carlos or someone here, but if you were to just leave Stride and Neutron in as replicated security chains, or will they just be literal replicated security chains, not top end chains that are effectively the same thing, you know? I think the same, I think it will just work yeah, I think replicated security is still just in the code right now. And I think it's been a goal to remove it just to simplify things. But I guess if it's in there and there's no problem, I guess we can just leave it. And we could just leave Stride Neutron as replicated security chains. Um, instead of, you know, it would be easier, I suppose. It could be it could be easier um, instead of migrating yeah, them or something. That's the thing. I do not know. Uh, that's what I'm trying to look at, right? So do it on a DevNet to do exactly yeah. this, right? To get Neutron launch it as a replicated security chain, like we were doing it before. And from there, try to get it to be top 95. So because it requires to do a neutral, first of all, to cancel the soft opt-out. So there are two operations that need to be done. Cancel the soft opt-out to neutron and change from top 100 to top 95. I think that will be sufficient. No, soft opt, it's okay. I mean, you, they should cancel the soft opt out, but a soft opt out won't actually be an issue. If they are running both 95% top end and soft opt out, it doesn't actually cause any problems. It's kind of weird, but it won't, it won't create any problems. Um, but what we could also do is just say, look, you guys don't have to change anything at all. It's just going to be replicated security because you still have like old code in there and it still works. Um, and uh, you know, my, my thing was, I didn't want to have two different code paths and complicate the code and that preserve the old functionality and stuff like that. But it seems like maybe the way that we wrote it wasn't really, it didn't, it wasn't really a factor anyway, and it wasn't really a problem to leave the old replicated security code in, in which I case maybe it's easier to launch to not do that. But I guess for the dev now, we should still try it out, like just in case. Yeah, we might as well. I, I, I'd like to know like what, what, what we can uh, expect to get out of running Neutron and DevNet. Like the DevNet has launched with, with the interchain security provider build. Like there's, there's, there's no uh, there's no check for us right now in the DevNet. There's no check available for us to see how it, things are going to progress on like a, a mainnet uh, path because the DevNet is already launched not with Gaia but with a, a partial set security uh -huh. build. So yeah. with the build with the provider build from Interchain Security Repo. That's right. Okay, we can do the same thing. We just take the consumer build from there and try to build it from replicated security all the way to top end. Uh, the important thing is that we shouldn't try to kick out stuff from the code until both Stride and Neutron are on top end. And afterwards, we can start cleaning up the code by removing things like soft opt-out or whatever else we don't need. But I think for the first iteration, the first release of PSS, until everybody starts using top end and opt-in, everything related to replicate security should stay there so that we have yeah. compatibility.
Okay, so the the tricky thing, Dante, the tricky thing would be like, and it seems like maybe we don't want to bother with it because replicated security is still in there anyway, so it's not a problem. Um, I wanted to make it possible to remove completely if that was going to make it easier for to for development. But I, I think the tricky thing would be basically to do a migration. There would be a software upgrade migration where, um, where we would be, uh, you know, modifying the database to kind of remove the neutron replicated security chain and then create a neutron top end chain. You know, and and that stuff, but maybe. I think, and uh, it might it might be required uh, once once we start talking about how to like integrate this partial security into Gaia. Uh, yeah, that that migration might have to be in place. It but might it also might not. I was planning on it, but it might not if replicated security just still is in there and it still works. So mm. that probably that's probably not something we have the answer right now. But probably for incentivized test net, we'll mm -hmm. probably just want things to be as easy as possible. Sure. Um, so yeah. Cool. Um, any questions or any other things that we want to chat about? Mm -hmm. In that case, I guess that's uh, that's all. We can call it a day. Um, I will stop the recording.